In today's tutorial, you will learn how to create this super cool 3D bubbly watercolor lettering piece in Procreate. This is a bit of a more advanced tutorial, but don't worry, I've broken down all the steps into small achievable chunks so you will be able to follow along. We are going to create the 3D letters first, and then I will show you how to create two different ways of filling the letters to create a unique look every time. It's really a lot of fun and super rewarding, so make sure you stick around all the way until the end. We're going to start with a brand new canvas and the size that I'm going to use is the screen size canvas which is 2732 by 2048 pixels. We're going to use that text tool to write the word love. Of course you can hand write this yourself as well if you want to but I'm just going to use this as a template and it's going to make that process a little bit easier. So we're going to increase the size of the letters quite a bit and then you also want to increase that kerning to make the letters a little bit more spaced out and this looks good now and then we are going to duplicate that layer turn the bottom layer off and then tap on the layer thumbnail and now we are going to rasterize the letters and we're going to do this so that we can move the letters around a bit which is what we're going to do next so for this we are going to use our selection tool and now you can select each letter and you can move it around a little bit so you might want to slightly put it on an angle or you might want to shift it around a bit Maybe we can make this one a little bit higher and then this one can go a little bit lower. You can also change the size of the letters ever so slightly if you wanted to. And make sure that you're not putting them too close together so that there's a little bit of space in between the letters but also not too far away. I think this distance looks quite nice. So we're going to move the E as well and this is looking good now. And so now we can place these letters in the middle here and you can make them a little bit bigger if you want to too. And then we're going to create another new layer and now we're going to create that bubbles. And of course you can use any of your favorite brushes for this. I recommend that you use a pressure sensitive brush and a script brush, which is part of the default calligraphy brush set in Procreate is a nice brush for this. So now we're going to create some wiggly lines around our letters. You could sketch this out first if you wanted to, or you could just be brave and you can just draw them in. The nice thing about using Procreate is that you can't really make any mistakes. So if you don't like what you've drawn, you can just try again. The next step is to refine our letters a little bit and you want to spend a bit of time doing this because it's really hard to change later on. So make sure that you've got the exact shapes of your letters before you proceed to the next step. And now let's draw in some fun bubbles and little shapes around our letters as well. You want them to be quite chunky and match the letters because it will make it so much easier to create the 3D effect later on. Try and place them in the surrounding white space for a much more cohesive look. And now we're ready to put in our shadows. We first want to make a backup of our lettering layer just in case we mess something up. You might also want to rename the layer so that you know that you want to keep it. And then we're going to duplicate this layer again. The next few steps are going to be quite tricky. So I'm going to go really, really slowly and explain everything to you in quite a lot of detail so that you can follow along. So now what we need to do is change the color of this bottom layer so that you can see where the shadow is going to go. And the easiest way to change the color is by alpha locking the layer and then just fill it with the color that you want. So I'm going to choose this reddish purple here and then I'm going to tap on fill layer. So now this has been filled and then I'm going to undo select alpha lock and so now we're going to select our top layer and we are going to move this ever so slightly to the top left so that the red layer here is revealed and so now what we're going to do is cut the black part out of the red part and in order to do that tap on the layer thumbnail and then tap on select this will invoke your selection tool and you can check that it has done it correctly when you see the zebra lines surrounding your black letters. So it's very important that you make sure that the zebra stripes are on. And then we are going to the bottom layer. We are going to create a duplicate. So now you have two red layers and one black one and you still have the zebra stripes on. And now on this middle layer here, you're gonna tap on the layer thumbnail and then you are going to tap 
on clear. So now you'll see that we've got the little outlines here in the layer thumbnail. You can't really see it in the big picture, but I'm going to show you in a second. We don't need the top layer anymore, so I'm going to turn the visibility of this off. All right, so now what we want to do is make this a little bit darker because that's going to be our shadow. And again, we are going to use our alpha lock method for this. So you're going to tap on the layer thumbnail and tap on alpha lock. Alternatively, if you wanted to use a gesture for this, you can also two finger swipe to the right to turn on alpha lock or to turn it off. And you can see that alpha lock is turned on because you can see the cheek and background here on your layer thumbnail. And then we're going to choose a darker color and then we're going to tap on the layer thumbnail again and fill layer. And so now you can see how the layer has been filled. Now we're going to turn alpha lock off again because we want to draw on this layer now. Now you can use your script brush again to draw on this. And so now we want to even out the shadows here a little bit. And in order to make sure that you're not accidentally drawing outside the lines, we are going to select this layer. So I'm going to tap on the layer thumbnail and I'm going to tap on select. And so again, we see that zebra stripes turning on. And so now if we select our outlines layer and draw on it, you'll see that we can only draw inside these lines. Of course, we don't want to scribble like this, but I just wanted to show you. So now we can fix this up a little bit and just draw in the rest of your shadow like this. And you want to go all the way around and this is quite nice now because really you can't go over the line, so you can't draw here, so this makes it quite easy to do this. Definitely check your little shapes here as well, just to make sure that they are the way you want them to be. You can leave your selection on because the next step is to create a little outline on the other side of your shape as well. So the right hand side is going to have a thick shadow and then the left hand side is going to have a little bit of a thinner shadow. And we could do the same thing again with cutting the shape out, but I actually find it easier to just draw them in. And it's actually quite satisfying to do this because you can just trace the letter like this. And because we've got the selection on, there's not really that much that can go wrong here. If you make a mistake, you can erase it and you can make the line a little bit nicer. So here, for example, if it's a little bit too thick, I can erase it and then I can draw again. And it doesn't have to be too precise. So you can go quite fast with this. You just want to make sure that you've got a nice line everywhere. And if you wanted to make that thick shadow even a little bit thicker, you could do this as well at this stage. But this is looking pretty good. And then also don't forget your little bubbles here on the side. You might also want to erase some of that thick shadow just to make sure that the lighter color is coming through a little bit nice. Especially here you can see there's hardly any of the lighter color. And definitely make sure that you've got quite a generous line all the way around. But it doesn't have to be all that precise. This is looking pretty good now so let's just make sure that we've got all the right pieces in place before we go to the next step so you still want to have your selection zebra lines on you want to have your dark shadow layer selected and then underneath you have your lighter lettering layer so now we're going to blur this layer and in order to do that select adjustments and then select Gaussian blur and now we're going to blur that shadow a little bit and you don't want to blur it too much you can see now I'm getting to seven percent and this is blurring it quite a bit already so I think five or six percent of blur is actually looking quite good if you wanted to intensify the shadow a little bit you can duplicate this layer and then it becomes a little bit more intense I think this is looking quite good now actually so we're going to leave it like that and we're going to move on to the outer shadows so now this is where our keep layer comes in again so we're going to turn this on and we're going to take a copy of this and then we can turn this off again and in order not to be confused we might want to rename this layer and we call this drop shadow and now I'm going to show you a really cool technique so the first thing you want to do is grab that shadow layer and then drag it down like this to the bottom right and now we're going to use motion blur and again we're going to drag it to the bottom right to create this really cool blur 
And then we're going to go back into our adjustments and now we are going to select Gaussian Blue. So the combination of Motion Blue and Gaussian Blue creates this really really cool effect. And it just creates a nicer shadow I think. And so now if you wanted to you can adjust this a little bit and move it up ever so slightly. And then you might also want to turn down the opacity ever so slightly. So we're going to double tap on the layer to bring up the opacity slider and then move it to the right. And the way I like to do shadows is I actually like to turn it all the way off so it's not there and then I'm going to turn it on from the bottom and then I'll stop when I think the shadow looks nice rather than going the other way around. I think this creates a little bit of a nicer shadow if you do it this way. All right, so this is looking really cool already. But now we are also going to add in some highlights and we're going to add the highlights at the top of our layer stack and we are going to choose white. And in order to paint in the shadows, I recommend that you use one of the airbrushes here in the airbrushing section of the Procreate brush library and you can use that soft airbrush for this. The setting I have here is 50% opacity and the size of the brush is around about 10% and so now you can ever so slightly draw in the highlights around the corners here and then you just follow the curve of your bubbles and create the highlights like this and let's not forget our little dots here. And now you can already see that 3D effect that's going on here which is looking really nice but of course we want to color in our letters a little bit and I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. The first is a little bit of a marbling effect and then the second one is a watercolor effect. So let's do this by create another layer on top of your layer stack and now you can use any of the airbrushes here. Maybe use that hard blend brush and we're just going to paint in some stripes it doesn't have to be precise at all. You just want some different colors. And because it's Valentine's Day, we can choose some beautiful pink colors here. So now we're going to choose Liquify. And this is the fun part now, so we can scramble this up a little bit. I like using the push tool for this. The size I've got here is 66%. The pressure is set to max. I've turned distortion off and my momentum is set to the max here as well. And now we can just start scrambling this up and see what cool effects we can achieve here. So what you want to do is really scramble this up quite a lot to create super interesting parts on your letters. Make sure that you've got all the colors come through and so it looks really cool. And then once you're happy with your marbling effect, let's see what it looks like on the letter. So what we need to do in order to put this on our letter, we need to create some clipping masks. So you tap on each of the layer thumbnail of our shadow layers like this. And then you can grab your marbling layer and you can move it above the letters and then it'll automatically create the clipping mask for you. And how cool is this? So now if you're not quite happy with how this came out because we've got the clipping mask you can actually move this around and so now you might find a nicer spot in your marbling that you might want to choose instead. So this looks really interesting here so you can also resize it of course you can turn it around and so now you can try out some different options for your marbling layer. I think it actually looks really cool here. And then also if you're not happy if you think oh maybe here it doesn't look so interesting you can go back in, you can choose liquify again and then you can scramble this around a little bit more and maybe find another little spot that looks a little bit better. And now I think it looks really cool. So this was our marbling background but now let's do a watercolor background as well. So I'm going to turn this off again and I also want to create a watercolor paper background and in order to do that I'm going to choose one of my paper texture brushes. I'm going to use the watercolor paper 5 texture for this and I'm just going to paint in the texture and then I'm going to change the blend mode to linear burn like this and so now this is going to bring the paper texture through the letters as well. And then we're going to create another new layer directly below our watercolor paper layer and this is where we are going to paint in the watercolor paint. And the brush that I'm going to use for this is my Petals Wet on Wet brush that's part of the florals painting set but of course you can use any of your favorite watercolor brushes for this. I just really like using this brush because it creates this really beautiful watercolor textures. And so now I'm going to tap in these colors. You can see how it creates these beautiful splotches here which creates a really really nice effect. So I'm just going to select some different colors, some lighter pinks and also some darker ones and tap in 
this beautiful watercolor background. And now of course we want to see what this looks like on top of our lettuce. So again, we can move this layer down and we can just move it below the marbling layer here that's not visible right now. And you can see now how we've got this really cool watercolor texture layer here. And then I thought it would also be nice to create a little bit of extra texture here. So what we can do now is create a new layer just above your coloring layer here. And we're just going to add a little bit of a rough texture now. And we're going to use the noise brush for this. You can find this in the material brush set of the default Procreate brushes. First up, I'm going to paint in some little shadows. And you don't want too much of this, just a very slight hint of this texture. And then we're going to create another layer and we're going to create some highlights as well. You can use white for this and then we can paint white here at the top. It just gives it that little bit of extra character which I think makes it stand out ever so slightly more. And it almost looks like you've got frosting here. So then I thought it would also be nice to have some little watercolor floating out of the lettuce. And we want to do that at the bottom of our stack. So create a new layer above your keep layer. And then I'm going to use my petals wet on wet brush again for this because it creates these really nice blooms that almost look like the paint is running out of the leather. You want to try and match the color at the edge of your leather for a more realistic effect. You'll see that I'm starting to paint a little inside the leather first and then almost drag the color out. You don't want to use too much pressure on your brush to keep the paint nice and light and just let the brush create these beautiful blooms. And then at the top of our layer stack now, let's add in some splatters as well. And I'm going to use the watercolor splatters brush. That's part of my fruit painting set. And when it comes to splatters, I always think less is more. It's a bit tempting sometimes to go overboard with them, but you don't want to do too much. You just want to add some splatters here where we've pulled the colors out. And there you have it. This is our artwork done. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And then I'm also going to bloop up another couple of videos so you can keep watching and you can keep learning. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.